It is an honor to have Pastors Greg and Janice with us today, as we were saying. They are a joy and a delight to everyone who meets them. And um, I guess we've known them about, gosh, 20... I can tell you exactly. In 2003 was the first minister's conference that was open to ministers everywhere. Prior to that, it was by invitation only, which... Uh, I know Janice and Greg went to lots of them up there in uh, up in um, Buena Vista, wasn't it? But 2003 was the first one, and we were at Regina and I were at that first one open up. So that's been 20 years ago, and that was that actually the the t- normally the the ministers conference is the first week in October. However, this was a t- kind of an unusual situation. This was the last week in September. Uh, the last few days in September leading into that. And uh, so that was September of 2023. So that's how long we've known uh, Greg and Janice since then. And a month later, then we were at their church. It was um, actually it's less than a month because it was, it was awesome. It was before Thanksgiving yeah. and it was your um, um, camp meeting. It was awesome. Camp meeting. Awesome. And Andrew was there at the camp meeting and, uh, and several other uh, really great speakers and everything. And so at that camp meeting, which was, about, like I said, about three weeks later, our son Javan joined us. And that's the first time that Javan got to meet uh, Greg and Janice and got to meet Andrew in person and he was 20 years ago. So 17 he was or 18? Set, he 17? just turned 17 years 18. old. No, yeah, 17. yeah 17. He was 17. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Greg and Janice poured a lot into Javan through the years. Now, so let me tell you what happened. So a year ago, October, Van, I get a phone call and a very unexpected phone call. And we didn't know what Greg was talking about for about 15 or 20 minutes. No, it wasn't that long, but. It was a long, after a while, Greg said, well, the real reason I'm calling is, and he started talking about this couple that they wanted to hire in Andrew's ministry, but he didn't tell us who the couple was for a long time. And we're thinking... Because Greg thought we would pass out and he wouldn't be able to finish the phone no, no, call. No, no, no. So, so, so <laughs> y'all have always wondered who took Javan and Dora from us. <laughs> well, well <laughs> so after a while, then Greg goes, well, the couple we're wanting to hire is Javan and Dora. And Van and I went, Javan, Javan and, and Dora? Dora. <laughs> <laughs> now, were Javan and Dora looking for a job? No. Um, Javan and Dora didn't know anything about this. And as you know, for those who don't know Javan and Dora, that's our son and daughter-in-law. They were our executive pastors at the time. And, and Greg said, we just wanted to call you first because we wanted to make sure it was okay that we wanted to hire Javan and Dora. And you know what we told them? We said, you know what? Yes, they're our children, and they've been with us a long time in ministry. But we would never get in the way of open doors that God has for them or for anybody. And it's between you and them and the Lord. So Javan didn't know anything yet. Dora didn't know anything yet. And uh, then Greg met with them. Greg and Janice both met with them. And uh, after he asked Javan about this, he said, by the way, we've already told your parents. And Javan said, you have? (laughs) So so Javan knew and we knew, but we we hadn't talked about it yet. So, but anyway, let me tell you what, y'all. It was the greatest thing that's probably ever happened for Javan and Dora. Um, As you know, Javan now has been asked to be an instructor at Karis, and he will be teaching beginning January 17th. Two courses. Isn't that awesome? It's his heart. He'll be teaching two courses on um, the foundations of the Old Testament and Old Testament foundations. That's Javan's heart. And He's very, very excited. And also, this Wednesday, everybody say Wednesday. Okay, this Wednesday at 5.30 Eastern Standard Time, Javan has been asked to be a guest on the Truth and Liberty Show. Um, So if you want to watch that, and um, Dwayne Sheriff will be hosting that, and he has asked Javan to be his guest. So just to let you know, I know y'all like to know when certain things happen, um, but a lot is happening with them right now. So 
Javan and Dora have been very busy, but it's very exciting. A lot of doors are happening. Well, the word them. says, give honor to whom honor is due. And I want to say this. <clears throat> Javan has been involved. He's an assistant director of uh, operations for Army. And uh, at that time, Greg was the executive director of Army. He's now has a different position there at the ministry. But Greg would, Javan would tell us, you know what, Pastor Greg has asked me to teach this course for him. And Pastor Greg's asked me to teach this other course for him. Thank you, Greg. We had a constipated teacher on our hands. <laughs> And if Javan, he's not teaching the word Javan of God, if doesn't teach the word, he gets concentrated he just gets with the word. And boy, he, that was such medicine for him. He that gets was concentrated with the word of God. That was such medicine for him. So anyway. And, and we appreciate you giving him those courses to teach because he really loved it. And not only did Javan and Dora appreciate it, his mom and daddy appreciate it. But Thank it's, you so much. Javan and Dora are so happy, and, yes. and they appreciate y'all more than you know yes. and we appreciate you Absolutely. more than you know and, and it's you know what it's wonderful when you see your children fulfilling their destiny for for jesus and although we miss them we miss them a lot and every once in a while i have to have those crying moments as a mother but um but we are going to go see them in colorado for christmas and um but anyway i just want to personally thank Greg and Janice, not not only for the open door for Javan and Dora to fulfill their ministry and what God's calling them to do, but through the years, before Javan met Dora, there were things Javan was going through, and they spent time pouring into our son, and we're grateful. And Javan has it's and Javan is grateful. He speaks so highly of you both. And thanks for loaning your car to him. <laughs> Javan, Javan and Dora, their, their car uh, engine kind of bit the dust. And so they are without a car. They're trying to decide what they're going to do. And in the meanwhile, while Greg and Janice were out of town, they loaned their car to him, which was such a blessing. Yeah. He's tried to be very careful and not, not put too many miles on it. So <laughs> but thank you again for everything. You know, yes. this is what... When, when the Bible says, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of God or the love of God, this is, this is what we do. Amen. As a church family and as a body of, of the, the bride of Christ, we're family. And we encourage and edify and build each other. The Bible says, exhort one another daily while it's still today. And so we just want you to know there really aren't enough words, but we're very grateful. And having y'all here is such a blessing. So let's give it up. Are you ready? Why don't we stand up and honor the man and the woman of God yes. as they come forth. All right. Greg and Janice Moore. We want you to share too, okay? Wow. Van and Regina are awesome. <laughs> they are. But you know what? Jesus is wonderful. But Jesus in you reaches out to the world. And that's what I want to share with you. You're Jesus to somebody. And let that life shine big through you. Every day. You know, each one of you are a miracle. You know, I'm a miracle. My dad was two pounds. He was born three months premature. I shouldn't even be here, but I have four brothers and me, and they put a girl's name on him. They dug a hole out back, was gonna bury him. But you know, Jesus raised him up. And you know what? Jesus can raise your dead situation up. Every single one of them. You speak life like Regina shared. You speak life to your body. You tell it what to do. Your body has to obey you. And it will obey you. Every moment, every day, your Jesus to someone today. Amen.
Awesome. I, I've got one. I don't need that. You take you take that down with you, honey. And Janice is awesome. Give her a good hand. She's. We uh. We are best friends, and and um, you know it, it's it's awesome. The body of Christ is so awesome. And uh, we need one another, yes? Uh, we need the local church, guys. There are times when, you know, if you're, you're, it's not just about what you receive, but it's about what you can give. But there are times when, you know, we, we, we get to know one another, we can pray for one another, we can, we can uh, man, there's so much of God's grace that, that is available for for us through the body of Christ. And when you come to church, don't just come expecting to receive only, but look for opportunities to minister to someone uh, every time you come to church. Uh, this is, you know, every time Janice and I go to minister, we're, we're praying, God, make us a blessing today. How many of you know you are a blessing? And so you look out for somebody to touch and, and come a little bit early or stay a little bit late, okay, to minister to someone. Yes? Um, look at your neighbor and say, I think he's talking to you. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. So, um, man, God's given you guys the uh, wonderful pastors. Uh, man, associate pastors, man, I appreciate, we just got to uh, meet uh, Rodney and Vicki again for, uh, and, and then of course, man, so many, so many of you are here serving, and Teresa and Mark, and so, so many of you guys are just doing such an excellent job of serving here, and uh, God's pleasure is over you. I'm just speaking that God's pleasure is over you. And, you know, he's, when, when Jesus ascended on high, he gave gifts to men. Right? How many of you know when, when Jesus gives gifts, they're the best? And he gave you Van and Regina as your pastors. And we've known them 20 years now. And these guys love Jesus. They're in love, they love one another. They love their family. And they love you. And, and so... And if you want to come and be fed, if you don't have a home church, you want to come and be fed, be loved, be, be ministered to, this is, this is a great church, the solid rock of Atlanta. And we're glad to be in relationship with uh, Van and Regina. Um, so I have some product uh, left on the back table back there. Um, this, is my, uh, this is my book called Scriptures to Live By. Now... This was the first book that I wrote, and all it is is just 41 categories of scripture that will help you for counseling or, you know, a quick reference for particular areas of need in life. My, for Bible study, my son Michael was healed when um, we found uh, categories of scripture on healing, on the authority of the believer, on the integrity of his word. And I thought, well, it'll work. The word works for Michael's healing; it'll work for anything else. And so I've got uh, categories here on guidance, on healing, on, uh, on on loneliness, on long life. Do you know there's a lot of scriptures on long life, on emergencies? Okay, uh, child training, child bearing, man, all kinds of wonderful. Uh, uh, you know th things that you can get from the word and so uh, you can give that to somebody who looks like they need uh, help okay <laughs> and this is my you know I'm uh, I have a television program now and uh, I didn't I didn't even go to Andrew to ask him to be on that, my, my son Michael uh, was his television producer. So uh, Andrew asked Michael what he was doing. He told him he was producing TV programs for his dad. I was just doing it for product. And, and so I'm on Gospel Truth 
gospeltruth.tv. Uh, gospeltruth.tv. Every day at 3 o'clock or 3 in the morning if you can't sleep. And, um, and so there's, a, there's hope for you because I'm, I'm on TV with a radio face. It's awesome. But this... But this, this is called, this is, this is my series called Adventures in Faith. I'm going to be teaching from this today, actually. Uh, cover the balance of grace and faith in your life. How faith and patience work together. Patience is not your enemy. Through faith and patience, we inherit. Uh, how faith is your sixth sense. How to overcome in an evil day and what to do when the promise hasn't happened yet and so give this to somebody who wants the promise to happen more quickly and uh, we can uh, we've got more product back there and so uh, open your Bibles wherever you'd like I'm going to be in Hebrews chapter 11 if you want to join me and, uh, and Luke chapter 17. Okay. <clears throat> Hebrews 11 and Luke 17. And uh, I'm going to tell you funny first. Is that okay? The, the way I got to telling funnies was when I was pastoring. Um, actually, I was staying with Van and Regina. Okay. When I was getting my master's degree. I came and was staying with you guys. And we were at a, at a church. Uh, we, we were doing a... They were doing a uh, module here in Atlanta, um, and I was at a, a big church here, and, they, and Peter Wagner spoke. And Peter Wagner got up and, and shared a funny. And so I went, and the next Sunday morning, when I came back to church, I, I, shared, a, I shared another funny. I mean, I shared that funny. And there were two, there were two men there that their wives had been praying for them and one of them got saved one of them came back to the Lord and both of them independent of each other went home and said uh, man that guy's funny I'm going to come back to church and I thought man if a joke will do that <laughs> and so people started sending me jokes and so I st started sharing them and, and I have to clean some of them up you know but, <laughs> but uh, anyway I just learned that people like to laugh I think I'm going to do a book of funnies, but but this is called the pregnancy uh, Q and A. So, question: Should I have a baby after thirty-five? Answer: No, thirty-five children's enough. I'm two months pregnant now. When will my baby move? Answer: With any luck, right after he finishes college. Question, my wife is five months pregnant and so moody that sometimes she's borderline irrational. Answer, so what's your question? <laughs> that's, that's funny, Mike. I don't care who you are right there. <laughs> question, my childbirth instructor says it's not pain I'll feel during labor, but pressure. Is she right? Answer, yes, in the same way that a tornado might be called an air current. <laughs> Question, when's the best time to get an epidural? Answer, right after you find out you're pregnant. <laughs> Question, is there any reason I have to be in the delivery room while my wife is in labor? Answer, no, not unless the word alimony means anything to you. Question, is there anything I should avoid while recovering from childbirth? Answer, yes, pregnancy. <laughs> this is funny, man. Question, do I have to have a baby shower? Answer, no, not if you change the baby's diaper very quickly. <laughs> and finally, question, our baby was born last week. When will my, my wife feel, begin to feel and act normal again? Answer, when the kids are in college. <laughs> That's greatness, man.
That was awesome. Hebrews 11, 6, and then we're going to look at Luke 17, verse 5. I, I want to talk to you about the subject of, of, that is really connected. It's connected with uh, what, what uh, Pastor Van and Regina have been sharing with you about healing and faith and so on. I'm going to deal with the subject of faith, but um, I just want to talk about only believe. Only believe. Uh, Hebrews 11.6 says, Without faith it's impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is. How many of you believe He is? And that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. It gives, it gives honor to God for us to simply believe Him about everything that He's done for us, but also everything that we're going to experience in life. You start your Christian life believing that God raises dead people. That's how you got born again. How many of you are born again? Do you know how that happened? You believe that God, you believe that Jesus is Lord and God raised him from the dead. Is that true? Okay. So what's the problem then? Believing God that he could raise up some dead situation in your life. Yes? It, it, see, the, what honors God is not just believing that He is, that God raised Jesus from the dead, and He's sitting at the right hand of the Father, and He's going to come back again, but also everything else He promised you that from His Word for healing and provision and, 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 and all the things that, that God's put in your heart. Do you have a dream or a vision God, that God's put in your heart? How many of you have a, a, something that God's put in your heart that hasn't yet come to pass? Okay, the Lord needs that to come to pass. He needs that to come to pass. He put that desire in your heart. And there's, the, the way it's going to happen is the same way you got born again. You, you believe what God said, and, but you believe only what He said. Someone here is believing God for a house. Who is that? You're believing God for a house or a better house. Okay, where, where are you at? All the house people. Okay, keep your hand up. In Jesus' name, we agree together, Father, for favor for this house. Irrespective of their credit score, irrespective, Father, of the interest rates, Father, and the prices. You've got a house for them. You put it in their heart. Lord, you're going to make a way if they'll believe. If you will believe only and not believe the credit score. If you will believe only and not believe what uh, you know the interest rates are. If you believe only and not you know say well there's you know there's not any houses in the area. Listen, God, if God put a house in your a desire in your heart, He's going to make a way for you to get into that house. But the way you're going to access that is to only believe. Amen. Let's thank Him now for those houses. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm, God, I'm, not, pl I'm not playing games here, guys. This is a real deal. And God, God's going to be glorified and that test is going to turn out to a testimony. And you're going to, man, you're going to, you're going to give glory to God get, when moving into that home. And you're going to give, encourage other people's faith. And, and it's not just a home. It's whatever else that He's put in your heart. Guys, He not only is He, not only believing He is, but He's a rewarder. Now, I'm not talking about believing for things that God's grace didn't provide. But what did He put in your heart? What desire has He placed in there? Guys, you know, get off of this stuff of, of comparing that desire with the money that's coming in and, or, or, or the resources that you have. Man, God's able to do it if you'll just believe. Several years ago, um, I probably shared this before, but several years ago I've had, I had a, a Jesse Duplantis came to Karis Bible College and, uh, and I love Jesse's ministry. I mean, he's, he's funny, he's encouraging, 
But up until that time, I'd heard him 20 or 25 times. I never got any revelation from him. And probably it was me because I'm a teacher and he's an evangelist, okay? So I'm not blaming Jesse. But I wasn't expecting anything. But this time he came and he started talking about a desire that God put in his heart to help his daughter get a home and get a car. And, and, and all of a sudden it was like I saw through his faith and he said, God didn't ask if I had the money for it. He just, asked, he just wants me to believe for it. And it was like all of a sudden I saw that there were, uh, Rodney, there were some desires God had placed on the inside of me that I'd stopped believing God for. Because I didn't have the money, I, I was making a good salary, but the desires that he put in my heart, the income wasn't there. And, but God's not asking if I have the income. Do I have the faith? Do, has he put the desire in there? And, and so I, I desired my daughter, I wanted my wife to have a new car paid for. And I wanted my daughter to have a, a, a new car. My daughter was driving a bomb of a car. My granddaughter would, I mean, it, it smoked, it leaked oil, it, the headliner was down, it was rusted. My, do, my granddaughter would ask her to drop her off a block from the school <laughs> because she was so embarrassed by her mom's car. I wanted to help my daughter get, get a new car. I wanted to help uh, Barry Bennett and, and, uh, and, and Wendell Parr get their first books in print. I wanted my book, A Prosperous Soul, to get in print. And I mean, I had some, several things. I wanted to help Andrew's ministry. I had several things that God had put in my heart, but I didn't have the money. Beth, I didn't have the money, present income coming in, even though what I had was, was more than sufficient, but it wasn't enough to do all those things that the, the, God put the desire on the inside of me. Are, are you tracking with me? So what did I do? I had unconsciously, I had stopped believing. And, and when Jesse came, it was like, man, forgive me, Lord for not believing because the income wasn't there. And man, I just said, I repented. And I said, okay, God, you put these desire, you put these desire, desire. I'm not talking about praying frivolous prayers. I'm not talking about using my faith for something I'm not sure God's grace has provided. The Bible says in, in Matthew 7, 7, ask and it'll be given you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and it'll be open. The Lord showed me about that verse. Ask for what you're sure about. Seek me about what you're not. And then hold on to, don't, don't, you don't knock on heaven's door. You're just being persistent. You're not letting go of what you're sure about. So you add, what I only ask for what I'm sure God's grace has provided. Now, guys, this wasn't, I'm not trying to impress you when I'm saying this, but this wasn't what I'd planned to the way I planned to start this message. So I know the Holy Ghost is directing this towards somebody that needs to hear this. Because, because God put those desires in my heart and I was only asking for what I know that God's grace provided, but I didn't have the resources on my own to do it. Are, are you with me? Yeah. And so I just believed. I said, Father, forgive me. And I, and I, just, I just believed, all right, Father, you're going to give me a, a new car for my wife, a new car for my, my daughter. Are you, uh, you're going to help me with those books. You're going to help me with the other things. I, I'm believing you in Jesus' name. And I was very specific on what I knew that God, what I knew that he put in my heart. What do you know that you know what you know in your knower? That you know God's put desire in your heart. We need to be believing for that and not be talk, praying about all the other frivolous stuff that you're not sure about. If you want, want to stop confusing your prayer life. And so within one year's time, I'm not promising you it'll happen like this for you. But I promise you it'll happen if you only believe. 
And within one year's time, my wife had a new car, paid for. My daughter had a newer car, paid for. My, we uh, we, we uh, put Barry Bennett's first book in print, uh, Wendell Parr's first book in print. Somebody gave me $8,000 for my book, A, a Prosperous Soul. And it cost about between six and eight thousand dollars to get a book in, in print to do it right and 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 all the other things we got two unexpected inheritances and one of them was from a distant cousin of Janice's that didn't even like her <laughs> but I'm telling I'm trying to encourage you guys all all of that came in because we just we just stopped exempting what we believed God for from what we could see with our eyes. We only believed. And, I'm, and it came in. And what, what God did for us, He will do for you. I said, He will do for you. Amen. Amen. Luke 17. The disciples, uh, Jesus was was saying, um, verse 3, Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. And if he, if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. And the apostle said, Increase our faith, Lord. <laughs> Increase our forgiveness faith here. And the Lord said, no, you don't need your faith increased. I, I, gave, I just gave you my, my word that you have grace to forgive people, right? Okay, you don't, what you need to do, verse 6. So the Lord said, if, you've been, if you have faith as a mustard seed, even, even if you have a little bit of faith, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea and will obey you. He's saying, look, I just want you to use your faith on, on, and, and voice activate what, uh, what, you know, what um, you guys have already shared this morning with Vicki and what Van and Regina, what Janice was saying. I mean, you've got to speak to your mountain. Speak to the obstacle that's standing in the way. What is it? in the sense realm, in the physical realm, that's standing in the way um, and telling you, no, you can't be healed. No, you can't have this. No, this is not going to happen for you. You can't have the house. You can't have the dream. You can't have the ministry. What is it that's standing in the way? Listen, you don't need more faith usually. Okay, now I'll qualify this in a minute. You, If you just use the faith you have and it only believe I'm telling you man that mountain will move the obstacle will move over are, are you hearing me yes. uh, a little faith can accomplish a lot it'll move things it'll change things it'll bring miracles it'll raise the dead it'll open blind eyes man it'll drive out demonic powers it'll change 25 over 200 or 200 I mean 20 20 whatever that is to 2020 praise God so with some people, their problem is a faith problem. In other words, it's a lack of knowledge of God's word or God's will in a situation. Okay, and so what's the answer to that? You need to teach people the will of God. But in a lot of grace and faith circles that I know, okay, the problem isn't isn't really a faith problem. It's either the fact that we're not using our faith, okay, we're not speaking, or it's a mixture problem where we're mixing two or more belief systems together hoping to get a faith result. The Bible calls that unbelief. Where we're mixing two or three belief systems together and, the, and what we, we, yeah, we believe the word, but then, well, then we allow our senses to tell us something else. The doctor's report, you know, the doctor said, you, got, you don't just have stage two cancer, you've got stage four cancer. Well, what if he told you you had stage 23 cancer? <laughs> well, there's not a stage 23. Well, what if there was? Are you going to stop believing? 
because a doctor gives you a, a worse report or you know you're believing God for a new house and you lose your job okay or something I, I mean there's all these things that happen in life we start off believing okay but then life happens and, and another belief system tries to creep in okay and so I want to look at Mark chapter 9 and I'm not going to read all these verses Mark chapter 9 but it's a story of the, the epileptic uh, boy that had epileptic seizures and Jesus and the three three of his disciples had been on the Mount of Transfiguration man they'd seen God and they came down um, and and they met this crowd um, verse 14 when he came to the disciples he saw a multitude around them and scribes disputing with them and and then um, verse 16 he asked the scribes what are you discussing with them um, then verse 17 then one of the crowd answered and said teacher I brought you my son who has a mute spirit now notice this is really interesting he, he said I brought you my son so this this guy had confidence in the disciples it would be the same as bringing it to Jesus when you bring someone to a disciple it's like you're bringing them to Jesus and they expected the same results right and, it, and, and wherever it seizes him, it throw verse 18, wherever it seizes him, he foams at the mouth, and gnashes at his teeth, becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. And then Jesus rebuked his disciples and said, oh, faithless generation. So the, they were not walking in the faith that Jesus had taught them. And then he said, bring him to me. Verse 20, when they brought them to him, him to him, then when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So, so here's what happened. Um, this boy had a seizure in front of Jesus. Everybody say in front of Jesus. So, so then later, and, and then the, then the uh, man said, you know, I know you can if you will. And Jesus said, you know, yeah, I believe, but you, but you, you've got to believe. And he said, "Well, I believe, but help my, help my unbelief." That's a good prayer, because, guys, this is this is where we miss receiving from God many times, and that's why I've called this message "Only Believe" is because, is because some we unconsciously uh, have allowed sometimes unbelief to come in. And we don't recognize it because we are believing, but then we're also considering something else into our belief system and it mixes it up and then we don't receive. And that's what, exactly what happened to the, to the uh, disciples here. And, and you can tell whatever, whatever this demon did to this boy in front of Jesus, he had done with the disciples. So everybody say a seizure. So he had a seizure, and then, and then, um, and in verse twenty-five, when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, "Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more." Now, how many of you know Jesus had authority? Okay, but now watch. Then the spirit cried out and convulsed him greatly. Everybody say seizure, seizure. grandma seizure. seizure, in front of Jesus. I said in front of Jesus who had authority over the it, it went from a seizure to a grand mal seizure now watch then he became as one dead everybody say seizure, seizure. grand mal seizure dead see guys this is exactly what happened with the disciples this was not their first rodeo Matthew 17 covers the same story and Matthew 17 follows Matthew 10. Matthew 10, Jesus, verse 1, Jesus sent the disciples out two by two to cast out devils. So this wasn't the, de the disciples' first rodeo. But what, what happened this time? 
In fact, they, they asked the question, why couldn't we cast him out? Uh, verse 28, and when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? And, and now Matt, you have to go to Matthew 17 to see the answer. So Matthew 17 talks about the same story. And Matthew 17 and verse 20. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. Verse 19, they asked, why could not we cast it out? And Jesus said, because of your unbelief. So it was, it was unbelief. And then I watch because he's saying the same thing, uh, how to deal with unbelief. If you had faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it'll move and nothing will be impossible for you. He was saying the same thing as, as, as Luke 17. And, and then verse 21, however, this does not go, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. This kind of what? This kind of unbelief. So, The enemy did the same thing with the disciples as he did with Jesus. He, he had a seizure, and, and now they, they took authority, and then the, then the boy had a seizure, and then a grand mal seizure, so it went from bad to worse, and then he looked dead. And then, so it went bad to worse to, it's over. Right? It's over. Right? It's over. Right, disciples? It's over, right? No. But that but but guys, what they saw somewhere along the line, they allowed what they saw to cause them to believe that more than what than the command of their authority. And what Jesus did that was different, Jesus did not allow the same things they saw, yes. he did not allow the seizure, the grand mal seizure, or the boy being dead Come on, yeah. Come on, man. to cause him to believe that more than his command that that, that, that boy was going to be healed. Are you hearing me? Yes. Guys, the difference between Jesus and his disciples is when the devil manifested himself through this boy with two seizures and the appearance of death, he did not allow himself to believe what he saw more than the command of his word he'd spoken. Are, are, you, are you tracking with me? Now compare to modern day disciples, you and me. How many of you are a modern day disciple of Jesus? See what we're tempted to do is to be moved off of God's Word because of a doctor's report, a lying symptom that's worse, chronic pain, family members' judgments, opinions, accusations from your family that you're a religious nut. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about, right? Uh, the, the length of time it's taken since we first believed See, that, that by itself is where a lot of people miss it. And they allow what they see. Well, it's been, so, how, how long do you have to believe? Well, how long are you going to believe that God raised Jesus from the dead? Did you witness that event? And yet you still believe? So you believe He is? And you're struggling with a little bit of healing you haven't seen that you believe? He's also the rewarder. But you get, you get into Him being the rewarder the same way you got into believing the, uh, that you're born again. Believing that God raised Him from the dead. Is you only believe. You don't allow mixture. That was a difference, guys, with Jesus. He allowed no mixture of, of, his, uh, of what He believed. This, guys, this is, this is so powerful. This is true in the area of healing. It's true in finances and relationships or any promise that you're believing from God's Word. Jesus' antidote to, to unbelief was prayer and fasting. He was a, Look, it helps you to be more sensitive to the spirit realm than the flesh realm. And that's what our problem is. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says, We walk by faith, not by 
Sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. Okay, what is sight? It's one of our five physical senses. So we could say this, we walk by faith, not by our physical senses, not by our five senses. Is that true? Okay. Now let me, let me help you. Uh, what, what, I, what I want to share with you just for probably five minutes here and then, and then I've got the airport in sight, we'll land and, 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 we'll, and we'll believe only. Amen. So faith is your sixth sense. It's your sixth sense. Now, you know how your five senses work. But I don't know if you've thought about this. Every day of the world, because this is going to help you operate by faith only, your sixth sense. Every day of the world, you allow one of your five senses to dominate to the exclusion and discounting of the four other senses. Every day of the world, you know how to do this. Every day of the world, you do this. You'll follow your sense of smell and discount your other four senses and leave, your, leave the room and walk into the kitchen to experience a wonderful experience of warm apple pie that your sense of smell picked up, but your other four senses didn't connect with it at all. And you'll discount four other senses to get to that experience. Is that true? Yes. You'll follow your sense of sight. When you see an ad, ladies, in the paper for a sale, to that department store and you'll discount those other senses and maybe even your husband to get a deal. Is that true? You will, dis you will, you will follow and allow to dominate your sense of hearing uh, and discount all of your other four senses to come to the aid of one of your children or grandchildren who you hear crying in another room in the house. Is this true? Don't tell me you don't know how to allow one of your senses to dominate the others. You do it every day. You do it every day of the world. To walk by faith, your sixth sense, all you've got to do is discount one more sense. And by the way, you already know how to do that. Because that's how you got bored again. Is that true? Okay, you believe. To get born again, you believe. With all your heart, Jesus is Lord. Confess with your mouth, He's Lord. You believe in your heart, God raised Him from the dead. Is that right? You believe that. Okay, you believe that you're going to heaven when you die. You believe that your name's written in the Lamb's book of life. Yes. You believe that. Yes. How long are you going to believe those things? Yes. Are you going to allow any of your five senses to, to talk you out of those, those things? Your very eternal existence is based on an event that happened 2,000 years ago that none of your senses witnessed. A place you're going that none of your senses have been. A, a book your name's written in that you've never seen. You know how to believe. You know how to let your faith, your sense of faith dominate and discount your other senses when it comes to God you, believing He is. Now guys, if you're going to walk by faith, then all you've got to do is, is apply that in this, in this area of him being a rewarder. If you're, let's read it again. Hebrews 11.6. Hebrews 11.6. But without faith it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. Two things. You know how to, you know how to follow your sixth sense of faith. And discount your other five senses. To believe he is. Is this true? 
and that he's a rewarder. How do you get to the reward? The same way you got to who he is. The same way you got born again. And guys, you know how to do this. You, you do it every day. With your five senses, you do it every day. To walk by faith is just to discount one more sense. And you know, by the way, how to do that. Because that's how you got born again. Guys, how do we, how, how do we receive everything that God has for us? We have to now believe in the same way that we believe He is, we have to believe He's a rewarder. What does that require? I just discount five senses. I know how to discount four of them. And I knew, and, I, and you know how to discount five of them to get born again. So I'm going to discount to, be, to experience the rewards that God has for you. Guys, we have to, we have to only believe. And that means you've got to learn to discount your five senses the same way you did when you got born again. Look at your neighbor and say, that's good stuff. That's awesome. I, I, love the, I love Jesus and his word. This is so awesome. So Mark chapter 5. And I'm closing with this. Mark chapter 5. And it's the story of Jairus and his daughter being healed. Okay? But it also includes the story of the woman with the issue of blood. Now look at verse um, 21. Now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came Jairus by name and when he saw him he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly saying my, my little daughter lies at the point of death come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. So first of all this is a very important person. Right? This guy had influence. And I mean man Jesus could have saw a lot of Jews saved but getting this guy's daughter healed and so this was an important um, ministry time. And then he must have seen or heard Jesus laying hands on people because, because his faith was, if you come, my daughter's at the point of death, but if you come lay your hands on her, that she may be healed, she'll live. Everybody say, she'll live. That was, that was his word. That was his faith. She will live. Now here's what happens, guys. Okay. Then after he made that statement, Jesus, Jesus went with him. And whenever you start out in faith, Jesus is going with you too. But then what happened along the way? A great multitude followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years had suffered many things. Jesus stopped along the way to minister to this woman with issues. And how many of you know Jairus could have put her in jail or had her stoned or something worse? Do you, you understand this woman wasn't supposed to be out in public? And she was interfering and, and this, his daughter's at the point of death. I mean, do you, don't, do you understand his senses were screaming at him? And he didn't say a word. We're going to come back to that. And then, you know, he healed the woman with the issue of blood, but he took some time with her. How many of you know Jesus has time for women and men with issues? Amen. And he said, uh, verse 34, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Be healed of your affliction. Verse 35, while he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? Okay, what was his word? What was the, where was his faith? What did he say? She will live. Remember? He said, she will live. What, what, what was this report? 
Your daughter's dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only what? Believe. Only what? Believe. What, is it, what was he supposed to do? Believe. Only believe. And guys, this is what happens. Many times we, we, we start out in faith. We're starting out. And it's like the disciples. Jesus said, get in the boat. We're going to go to the other side. They got in the boat. They were professional fishermen. They knew that there was an impending storm. And it was worse than they thought. And the water filled, filled their boats. But more importantly, the, wasn't that the, the, that the water filled their boats. The storm got into their hearts. And you know they were believing because they got in the boat. But then you know they, they let some other belief system enter in because they went to Jesus and said, don't you care? Or you don't care. And then we're going we're gonna to perish in the storm. So it went from we're going to the other side to uh, you don't care and we're perishing, we're going to die. Guys, it's exactly what happens when we start off in faith and then life hits us, delays hit us, disappointments come, people get in the way, things don't go our way. <laughs> Pastor Greg calls Van and Regina and says, I want your kids to come to <laughs> when I hire your kids. And <laughs> when I finally got to the, told them what I wanted, the, the, all the air sucked out of the <laughs> conversation. It was about 30 seconds. Well, you, you know there are our executive pastors, right? I said, I know, and that's why I'm calling you before I, call, <laughs> before I talk, talk to them, because I, I would not talk to them without, and I know Andrew wouldn't, wouldn't allow me to, without doing, doing proper cr protocol. If you say that you don't think it's the will of God, I'm not going to call them. I'm not going to ask them. But thank God for pastors but also parents that want the best for their children are willing to release them and then now look they released them and now now they got these awesome folks right here and then all and then so many of you amen and man by the way guys man this worship was so awesome today such a man don't take for granted what god's given us but, but see, we, we start off in faith. Yes. But then storms happen and people get in the way or, or judgments try to come. I remember when, when I had cancer, I had a knot in my throat. And they, before they actually went in and took it out, uh, and it was about golf ball or ping pong ball size, I was, we were going to this church and, and uh, I was <laughs> believing God, but I got upset at the pastor allowing the opera singer guy get up remember the opera singer honey yeah. and this guy was really good but he, every every week he would have him do a special song and then the opera singer stayed up on the platform while the pastor preached how many of you know that's not right <laughs> but that was the pastor's call not me but here I'm needing to receive healing and I'm getting upset at the opera singer. And guys, I'm just confessing my sins to you, okay? But when we start off believing, look, I have landed, we're coming up to the terminal, okay? But guys, we start off believing, but then we, we, what happens is the enemy sins. How many of you know Jairus could have got major offended at Jesus and the woman with the issue of blood? It wasn't just the fact that don't, you know, don't give up believing, but don't get offended. Don't, don't pass judgments. Don't judge why are the pastors doing this or, or that. Like, oh, well, are you the pastor? Now, I'm not saying you should, if there was something really wrong that you could ever go, you should not go and talk to your leaders, but, but guys, you leave that stuff to them, but I'm, I'm, but it's not just that it's judgments on the job or it's, you know, judgments against God, or we get, we allow ourselves to get offended or, you know, all these things that the enemy's trying to do to crowd out and keep us from receiving the reward that God has for us. 
<clears throat> if you'll use your faith, you'll speak to the mountain. Amen. You, you got to speak to the mountain. And, and, and only believe, guys. And then I'm not, look, I, we all subconsciously enter into different things, but, don't, but you got to steward your mind from allowing those things to enter that would stop you from believing. That would allow another belief system from your senses to enter in. I'm, not, I'm just not going to do it. I, I was in the UK recently and, and it was in this little pub. That's where they have the good meals and stuff. And, 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 it had, and I was going down to the restroom and, and, and it had these short things and I'm tall. And, and, it, and it had a sign that said, mind your head. That's what we've got to do. We've got to guard our hearts, guys. From any other belief system. From any other, look guys, your senses are going to tell you all kinds of things. But you know how to discount them. And that's, it, it, that's how we receive from God. That's how you're going to receive your healing. That's kind of how you're going to receive your house. That's how you're going to receive, uh, those of you who are single don't want to stay that way. That's how you receive your husband. That's how you receive your wife. That's how, guys, this is how we receive from God. But the fight is, it's a fight of faith. You've got to set all these things aside. I'm not, I'm not going to allow the devil or people or anyone else to stop me from the reward that God has for me. I'm only going to believe. Amen. Father, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for the grace to set aside not just four senses, but five senses. Anything that's trying to rob us from moving out of a place of only believing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, let me ask you two things. How many of you God spoken to this morning about something where you saw that you'd either allowed unbelief or something to come enter in and it's kept you from only believing? I just want to see, the, see those hands. Praise God, man. Thank you for your humility. I'd love to hear back from you about how the Lord's leading you and how He's bringing you into that reward. Um, it's Vicky, right? Okay, Vicki, uh, God's pleasure is over you. Uh, but there's some desires that He's put in your heart, some big desires. And there's at least one of them I know that, that you were like me, you let go of. And, and God, want, God said, pick it back up. He's going to bring it to pass. He loves you, and you're his daughter. And I just see the Lord just, just holding you in his arms. And I see, man, that, that desire is so, it's so pure. And man, you're, you give God pleasure, girl. Your, your life gives him pleasure. And he wants to give that to you. And he wants to dance with you. Man, I just see the Lord just in, just in your time with Him. Just dancing as a little girl in His presence. Thank you, Father. Thank you for restoring, Father, that childlike faith in Vicki and the things that you put in her heart. That dream's coming to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This couple right here in the middle, and you've got a you have no hair like close to me and and then uh your uh, pretty wife is that your wife i'm just guessing okay do you, do you guys have children okay your 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 children i'm just hearing your whole family is a blessing and and god is uh god's going to use you you guys to be influencers in the kingdom and uh i just see god gathering people around you you guys are going to share uh, with others, raise up uh, other. It's like you guys are a model family. God, God appreciates your family. And but uh, but but you've got to stop exempting yourself because of weaknesses and different stuff that you know. But you but you know and you well God knows. But man, God's forgotten all that and men. Man, the Lord, the Lord's seeing you after His purpose in your lives, and and you guys are great influencers. Amen. You're going to influence.
people for, the, for good, for the kingdom, uh, young couples, young people. Man, I just see God gathering people around you. You need to stop discounting or exempting yourselves because of mistakes of the past or failures of the past or people that have done you wrong in the past, all that. God's got great things for you. Your, your future, man, is, is so bright. Man, uh, re remember me when you come into your kingdom, okay? <laughs> And it's like there's ministry, but, but also finances. Abundant finances coming into your lives. Do you, are you in business or? Okay. okay. Do, you, do you want a business? Do you have that in your heart? Yes, sir. I believe there's a business that God has for you. That may not come all at once, but, but I believe God's going to raise up a business or businesses through, through you guys. And, but also I see ministry. So, uh, man, you, you, you guys are blessed. And, and, but stop, stop exempting yourselves. See yourselves as the way God sees you and, and, and give yourself permission to succeed and, and don't compare yourselves with anyone else. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Father, we just bless this couple and we just say, Father, they are a blessing and you're going to use them mightily in your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. So, Susan, um, God's God's granting you the desires of your heart. He's granted you the desires of your heart. And you're going to see that those things fulfilled and come to pass. And um, man, it's like it's exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think. So don't be, don't be afraid to ask. <clears throat> don't be afraid to ask. God's also speaking that to several of you. Some of you are afraid to ask. You're afraid to ask because you're afraid, you know, you may not receive. It's exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. God, God put that desire, those desires in your heart. I just see divine connections and divine appointments for you, Susan, in Jesus' name, in these coming days. Praise God. Let's lift our hands and thank Him, Father. We thank You for Your Word. And Father, Father thank You for the grace. Just show us, Father, it's like that man prayed Lord I believe but help my unbelief help me if there's any unbelief Lord that I'm, I'm not aware of show me so I can believe and receive the full inheritance of what you have for me in Jesus name and I'll discount five senses to come into the fullness of what you have for me father in Jesus name amen amen God bless you guys Let me uh, let let me let me say this before let me say this before I go. Okay, um, I could not deliver this word like this had you guys not been pouring of such a wonderful foundation of faith in people. I've I've ministered this before, but I've shared things in a depth and. A, it's because you guys are doing a great job as pastors feeding feeding the people. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. These are steep stairs. <laughs> well, that'd be great. That'd be great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. That was awesome. Was that good eating or what? That was good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You know what? Take a seat for just a minute. We're going yes. to, we are going to do an altar call, but before yes. we do, we want to take up a special offering for Greg. Didn't you enjoy that? Amen. Amen. Greg, thank you so much. And so now let's, let's receive a special offering. You know what? The Bible says you give to a prophet and you receive a prophet's reward. Do you know that Greg and Janice are ministering all over the place? And with him ministering on television, and um, and I just believe, um, hallelujah. Greg, I have a word for you. Greg's hugging folks right now. All right, Greg, can you hear me? I have a word for you. You know, you, yes, you're on Gospel Truth TV, and that's awesome. But it's going to go beyond that. So... 
just know that God's going to be opening those doors for you. I can see it so clearly. And 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 let me just say that the, the television, that's just the beginning. There's going to be stuff that Greg's going to do all over the world. And everything you sow into what Greg's going to be doing, do you understand that you reap a harvest as well? Everything that, that he is blessed with, you sow seed into that, and you're going to reap the same harvest. So right now, we want to sow into... Greg's ministry. We want to sow in. We want to give him our best. And I tell you what, give him your best today. That's one thing, Solid Rock of Atlanta, y'all are great givers, and we are so appreciative. And as you know, there's nothing I'd rather do than to give offerings to other ministries and to sow into them. Because you know what? When we do that, God's going to take care of Solid Rock. But as we sow into to Greg's ministry, Greg and Janice's ministry. Watch and see what God's not only going to do for Solid Rock, but what He's going to do in your own personal lives, whatever you sow in. The Bible says, Give and it's given back unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaped together, and running over. Running Amen. over. So, remember, I've always said before, do you want a thimble full running over, or do you want a, not even a bucket full running over? Do you want a truck? A, a, Dump truck. Dump truck. Yeah. <laughs> a dump truck overflowing. Right. Y'all, let's give him our best. Let's do this today. Amen. And let's, do you know what? Honestly, what a treasure this was. This is our end of the year guest speaker. And I mean, wasn't that awesome? Yeah. What an honor. I tell you what. I, I, again, Greg, we are honored. We are honored and privileged. Thank you Absolutely. so very much. Yeah. And y'all, let's do it. Let's give him our very best. All right. Let me, let me give you the logistics of how to do it. If you can put that up on the screen, please. Oh, you got it up here. Okay. You, if you're writing a check, you make the check out to this church, the Solid Rock of Atlanta, up in the two column. In the four column, put Greg Moore Ministries. That's M-O-H-R. Greg Moore Ministries down in the four column. And just let the Lord lead you and be let the Lord lead you in generosity as you sow into Greg Moore Ministries. If you if you want to, you, if you giving cash, then you need a Solid Rock of Atlanta envelope to have, to give cash. Ushers have the envelopes in the aisles. Raise your hands; they'll give you an envelope. On that envelope, there's a, on the right hand side, you'll see where it says offering. Just put a check mark there by offering, and to the side of that left side of that check mark, put Greg Moore ministries and then put the amount fill it out completely put your first name last name all the pertinent information so that we will be able to give you credit uh, keep a record of that for you on this cash there's no way to do it unless you have all your uh, your email and your rest of your information on that for us to do hallelujah all right and if you go to our website go to our giving uh, spot on our website go to the solid rock of Atlanta dot org dot org. It's very easy to get there. And when you do, you will just just follow the prompts. You'll see where it says uh, giving and click on giving and just follow those prompts. Very easy trail. Very easy to do. And you will see a category there. It will say you'll see tithes and offerings. You'll see other and you'll see Greg Moore Ministries. Now that's up there right now and it will stay up for a little while. I encourage you to go ahead and take care of that before we take it down because we are writing one check to give to Greg and to Janice for Greg Moore Ministries from the Solid Rock of Atlanta and they will I will have to take it down before we write that check so we you know we don't nothing comes in after after we've already uh, taken it down and write the check so um, anyway so be go ahead and do that now if you plan to do that that would really be great and like I said You'll see on there, uh, Greg Moore Ministries is one of the, uh, from the drop down menu um, that you can just click on and it will go straight to Greg Moore Ministries. And this part of this check that we write from the Solid Rock of Atlanta to Greg Moore Ministries. Hallelujah. All right. Well, I'm going to pray over it right now. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for this special offering for Greg Moore Ministries right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we, we are a giving church. We are a sowing church. One reason we give, well, we give because we love you and we give because we trust you, but we also understand the importance of sowing seed. 
seed, seed time and harvest. As long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. So we thank you today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we're sowing into Greg Moore's ministries, Greg Moore Ministries, Lord, through cash, through check, Lord, through on our website, Father, through online. And Father, it's going to be a blessing. So when we write that check from the Solid Rock of Atlanta to Greg Moore Ministries in a few hours from now, Lord, it will be a great blessing for this ministry, for Greg Moore Ministries and for the Solid Rock of Atlanta and for you personally, as Regina said. And Father, we give you praise and glory and honor. We thank you, Father, for all the wonderful things that are being accomplished through Greg Moore Ministries. We love Janice, we love Greg, and we are thankful for their lives and all their, the blessings we be heaped on them. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If you want to bring those uh, any cash that you have now that you're giving in an envelope, like I said, with the uh, you know Greg Moore Ministries on there designated, if you want to have any cash like that, go ahead and bring that up now. This will be taken up. This will not be mixed with the other church offering this morning. Cash or checks, either one. Put them up in the buckets up on the stage, please. Hallelujah. You know, we never want to end a service without making sure everybody knows Jesus is their Lord and Savior. If our prayer ministers will come on down, we want our prayer ministers to come down if you would. Hallelujah. God is so good. And we want to make sure not only do you know Jesus is your Savior, and if you don't, we want you to come down and let our prayer ministers pray with you. But we just want to make sure that you're filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That's where the power is. Man, you want to end this year with the best, then that's what you need to do. Hallelujah. Make sure you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit because that's just plugging into the power source. So if you need either one of those or if you're watching online and you have not received salvation or the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you can call us at 404 six nine seven five two one five again that's four oh four six nine seven five two one five so we want to go ahead and we're going to say by the live stream live stream thank you so much for joining us today and we will look forward to seeing you next sunday yeah join us again next sunday please if you're watching on live stream at 10 a.m eastern standard time u.s time And if you need prayer for anything else, you feel free to come on down. Also, if you're a first-time visitor, if you'll please go to our hospitality room right back in the corner over there, and you will meet someone there who will teach you or show you what our Lighthouse group is all about and the areas where they'll be. So Kevin and Allison, raise your hand. Okay, they're going to be back there, and they will help you find a Lighthouse group in your area that meets every other week. So I think we have uh, 14, right, sharing 14 Lighthouse groups around Metro Atlanta. There's one near you. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Father, we thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you, Father, that your word does not return void, but it accomplishes that which it was sent forth to do, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just want to only believe. Not just believing. We want to only believe, Father. We don't want to... Uh, come up with hypotheticals or what this ha suppose this happens or like like we Regina and I talked about and what if what if Lord we only believe only believe whether it's about finances whether it's about health whether it's about promotions whether it's about um, getting a house getting cars Lord uh, finances whatever it is Lord our whole life our whole lives and our whole lifestyle Lord is tied into only believing only believing your word only believing your your precious promises only believing not even taking into consideration anything contrary to that but letting our hearts be set like flint lord towards you and your promises and your word not even entertaining anything other than that we greatly love you lord we thank you so much lord we thank you for divine appointments this very week today even lord 
the supernatural, Lord, we'll be given an opportunity to lead someone to Jesus at lunch or somebody uh, needs something, Father, and, they, and calls you. Father, you give us the right words to say, Father. Uh, we'll be at a gas station or wherever, and Lord, it's going to be a divine appointment for someone else and for us. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty. Love on some one all around you and you